Okay, well, welcome back. I'm Tom Andrews, uh, once again, National Director of the Win Without War Co Coalition. Here, I'm very happy to say with General John Johns, retired uh, Brigadier General, who has been part of our Win Without War team of uh, generals who've been traveling in locations around the country to talk about national security, national defense, the Iraq War, Iran, and other related issues. General, thank you so much for being uh, with us again. We're on our way. We're just a few miles from Dulles Airport. We're on our way to New Mexico. Uh, to meet with uh, some of our membership uh, and others out in Albuquerque. We'll be meeting with the Albuquerque Journal, um, the editorial board and others to talk about particularly Iran. Uh, before we uh, talk, and I'm going to ask you a few things about you uh, first, General, um, I just want to note uh, the, the, the passing um, of, uh, of General Bill Odom. Uh, General Odom, uh, as many uh, who have been are familiar with Women Without War's work, uh, has, was part of our team of uh, generals, very outspoken, very eloquent, very passionate, um, very clear-headed, and was part of our uh, briefing for reporters just a few weeks ago before General Petraeus at his public hearing. And we just want to note the, um, the passing. He was a, a, a patriot, a scholar, uh, and a good friend. Uh, he's not only a patriot. He was a powerful intellect. He was very loyal to the Constitution of this country and taking positions before the war, trying to warn against it, and afterwards giving, I think, very reasonable uh, patriotic critique of the policy and not mincing words about how to get out. Uh, he just did not understand why the administration so stubbornly refused to accept that they had made a major blunder. Bill Odom died uh, over the weekend uh, in his summer home in, um, in, in Vermont. Um, General Johns, first of all, a little bit about uh, you. you. You served you, your career in the United States Army. You also served uh, in the Department of, uh, of, of Defense. What were your crit critical roles? Well, during the 60s, I, I spent about 10 years uh, involved in counterinsurgency in Vietnam. I taught the counterinsurgency doctrine at uh, Special Warfare Center in Fort Bragg. I was one of three people who developed the first counterinsurgency course. I went to Vietnam where I was advisor to the political warfare school, came back and served uh, eight years on the Army General Staff, and I wrote uh, some papers that were distributed as policy guidance for how to conduct uh, counterinsurgency. And then after I retired, I taught national security strategy and national security decision making for 14 years at the National Defense University. So I've been heavily immersed in uh, this subject for many, many years. I currently coordinate the National War College Alumni Association seminars on national security at uh, Fort McNair, which we hold twice a year. And one of your War College uh, alumni, someone who you uh, was at the War College with, was none other than Senator John McCain. Senator John McCain, that I know very well, yes. And I was apolitical. I'm independent political vow. First political sign ever put in my yard was for John McCain in 2000. He's not the same John McCain that I knew then. Well, let's, 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 let's talk about this, General, because Senator McCain is making uh, a major point out of this whole question of whether or not we should be engaging countries like Iran or not. Um, he's saying that to engage is tantamount to appeasement, uh, Neville Chamberlain. Um, what, what is your response to, to, to that, that criticism of, uh, of Senator uh, Obama in his position? Well, uh, to me it is nonsense, but it is a characteristic of people who want to consider themselves tough-minded, never yielding, it's re it reflects the kind of view that Cheney said, we don't negotiate with evil, we defeat evil. It's people who say that it's tantamount to appeasement if you talk to someone you disagree with. Now, the president's father has been trying to get his son to get off that for seven years. He's through his surrogates. James Baker and Brent Scowcroft, even having them write articles, approving them writing articles, saying, for gosh sakes, you've got to do that. He even instigated the Baker-Hamilton Iraqi Study Group, which recommended you need to do that. Uh, George Bush Sr. was behind a lot of that. He is fit to be tied, I am told, by a close sword. 
that his son refused to do that. Now, John McCain is a pugnacious individual. I know John well. He's an honorable person. I like him personally, but he is very dogmatic, and he takes things personally. Uh, that's good to be a fighter pilot and to resist guards in a prisoner of war camp. It is not suitable for a president, in my view. So, so what do you do? I mean, here you have uh, you have a country that uh, uh, is trying to develop, according to the administration, uh, uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, they are providing, uh, according to the administration, um, IEDs and other uh, weapons and training that are uh, killing U.S. troops uh, in Iraq. Uh, they're a challenge and a problem. Um, the president says we should only negotiate with them on the condition that they stop enriching uranium and then we'll sit down uh, and talk with them. Um, what's the alternative, General Johns? How can we confront uh, a challenge like the, the, the challenge posed by Iran um, in, a, in, a, in a different way? Well, look, let's understand that in 2003, the Iranians tried to talk with us about not only that, but the recognizing the state of Israel, talking about the nuclear program. We refused to talk with them. Now, the notion that you have to talk, you will talk to someone only if they agree to the conditions that you want to negotiate about is nonsense. Uh, it, it just doesn't make sense. The way you do it, is to work through the international community, work patiently, and remember that they have an election coming up next year. In 2009, the way you want to guarantee that the hardliner state president is do what we're doing now and say we're going to have regime change. The Iranian people, and I get this from many sources, there are a lot of moderates there. If we would use a little more finesse and diplomacy to say what are their legitimate interests in the area, and they have legitimate interests which we refuse to recognize. So by our saber rattling and our refusal to negotiate, we are empowering and strengthening the hand of uh, President Ahmadinejad by saying here we have this, we're being threatened here, we should be developing whatever means of defense that we can, and therefore the, the moderates have less and less of a position uh, within okay. it. Of course, the same thing has happened in Cuba. Just the obdurate view that if you talk to someone, that you're going to change their behavior and what you do is embolden the people to support them. Uh, you contain Iran. I'm not convinced that they would be hell-bent on developing nuclear weapons. They do want nuclear power and that is a legitimate view. So, my view is the same as Bill Oldham's, as you were talking about, and Bill Oldham was uh, arguing this all along, yes. as has been James Baker and the President's father, is you talk to them and you talk to Syria, you talk to other people and say, let's see if we can get with some accommodation. Now, if you ask me, what if that doesn't work, I would say, you contain them even if they obtain nuclear weapons. I don't see that they would be any more prone to national suicide than Russia or China or any other country with nuclear weapons. So I, the worst thing we can do to me is to go to war. Even if it's limited to bombing and missiles of sites, we couldn't use ground troops and if you think four dollars a gallon for gasoline is steep, you haven't seen anything. General, I want to thank you for, for joining us uh, here. We're about to, to get on an airplane. We're heading to New Mexico. We're going to be talking about Iran and the, 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 the debate about whether or not engagement is appeasement. Uh, General Johns will be part of that team uh, going out there as well as other locations in the country. And I want to thank you on behalf of uh, our entire coalition, General Johns, for being part of this. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. And we'll see you back next week uh, right here in the Anti-War Room.